Alrighty. So we have an interesting little scenario for us today. This is going to be a North Korean attack on the United States with their ICBM fleet. You're going to see some other stuff modeled here, which is mainly some of their more short range uh, weapon systems attacking South Korea. I'm going to do a separate video, which is going to focus just on their attack on South Korea and Japan and basically in a theater range. But the purpose of this video is to really track their ICBMs <clears throat> and targeting of the United States, of U.S. cities, the, the 10 largest U.S. cities, and whether or not our ballistic missile defense systems are capable of stopping a limited ICBM attack like this. So our systems are comprised of a few uh, different things. And kind of for those that are unfamiliar, ballistic missile defense is generally going to target one of three phases for an ICBM. It's boost phase when it's first taking off, like any other kind of rocket or missile. It's going to violently thrust in the air. Relatively short phase. Then there's going to be the longest phase, which is its mid-course, which is basically where it's traveling generally exo-atmospheric from one location to another, depending on the distance between where it's fired and where it's going to land. We'll tell you exactly how high it's going to go and how long it's going to spend in that mid-course phase. And then the last phase is the terminal phase. And that's when it's basically coming down back to the Earth at an extremely high rate of speed. In fact, a lot of attention is paid to hypersonic weapons and everything. Well, every ICBM is hypersonic when it re-enters the atmosphere. The difference being that what's a big deal nowadays is really hypersonic glide vehicles, which is able to change course, which an ICBM is not. But most ICBMs, I shouldn't say most, but for at least the last several decades, ICBMs have often been uh, fitted with Multiple warheads, they'd be called uh, MIRVs, multiple reentry vehicles. And so that makes things even tougher for when it comes to intercepting them. Not only are you going to have one missile, but you'll have multiple warheads reentering. And you're also going to have potential decoys and electronic countermeasures and other things. So the United States ballistic missile defense systems are anchored around several different things and it depends on a is it a short range ballistic missile is it a medium range ballistic missile or is it a um, what they consider a long range ballistic missile or intercontinental ballistic missile for intercontinental ballistic missiles there's only one system that's specifically designed to intercept those uh, ICBMs and that is the ground based mid course interceptor it's in the name it's a designed to intercept an ICBM in its mid-course phase. The United States has two ground-based mid-course interceptor sites. One of them is in Alaska, and one of them is in California. Um, and trying to remember off the top of my head, I believe they have 44 interceptor missiles between the two sites. I know there's some talk about adding additional missile interceptors as well as an additional third site. And they're also working on an upgraded, improved interceptor missile. So having said that, with the intercept rate, they say about a little over 50% through testing and everything. And the idea that three interceptor missiles against a target would um, be 97% effective. And again, don't quote me on that. I'm just going off the top of my head because I had to re-record the audio. This is a new microphone. I had some issues before. Um, but regardless if it's two or three, the idea is that with 50 or 44 interceptor missiles, even if we expand to 54, anything like a Russian or even Chinese arsenal with their number of ICBMs and warheads would easily overwhelm our systems. Now, we do have some secondary systems. We have our THADS, which is designed to intercept in the terminal phase when it's coming back down to the Earth. That's really a last resort, and those are really designed to intercept intermediate-range ballistic missiles. They're not very really designed for 
ICBMs. You're going to see a quick cut right there. The reason why is um, this scenario is made by this gentleman. Um, he sent it to me on Twitter. Did a phenomenal job. He had some systems in this scenario which are more future speculative, solid state laser defenses and stuff like that. And so I had to go back and take those out. I forgot. You know, I've been playing around and doing multiple different scenarios using his base scenario. And like I said, he did a phenomenal job. But he did model some speculative things in there, including uh, North Korean uh, sub-launch ballistic missiles and these solid uh, solid laser defense systems. So I did take those out. One thing you're going to see on the screen right now, that's one of the mid-course interceptor sites at Fort Greenlee. They are tracking those inbound missiles. So they're tracking not only the inbound missiles, they're also tracking missiles over in the um, Korean theater as well. So it uses a sea-based radar to help track. Um, you'll see that over there in the um, Alaskan uh, island chain. It's a capable mobile site, so it can change positions as needed. And it's a very effective tracking system. It has an enormous range. So they're able to track those incoming ballistic missiles because you cannot intercept them if you can't track them. Um, so there's the mid-course interceptors. There's THAAD, uh, Patriot Systems. Again, not designed for ICBMs. But if ICBMs are launched in the United States, the United States is going to use what they have in an attempt to intercept. Uh, there's also the Aegis Ashore system and then the Aegis system that's on our both our Arleigh Burke destroyer ships as well as some of the Tyco cruisers. Those are designed, those ships are designed specifically around ballistic missile defense, depending on their loadout. And so they'll have SM3s and SM6 interceptor missiles, which again, designed for different things, SM3 more. And then SM6 would be like the uh, terminal phase. So what we're seeing right now is some of the uh, ground-based interceptors are being fired off. So we have some tracking north and some tracking south. We have uh, North Korean ICBMs that are tracking north, targeting areas such as Philadelphia, uh, Chicago, and New York City. And then you have some ICBMs that are tracking south, which would be targeting Los Angeles, San Jose, uh, Houston, San Diego, and a few other, uh, Phoenix. And so they have interceptor missiles tracking, trying to intercept those both in the north and the south. And then, like I said, we have some THAAD systems that are set up around different cities there on the west coast. We also have some Patriot batteries as well and some Arleigh Burks. One of the things, because I am modeling at the same time that North Korea is launching several theater-level weapons against South Korea, Japan, and uh, some of the other uh, islands around there, that our interceptors or our tracking mechanisms are tracking several things at once. It does appear like the ground-based interceptors were fired a little bit too late. It looks like they're having a hard time keeping track and intercepting. Now you see these have started to enter the terminal phase, so they're moving much more rapidly. We have fired off some additional interceptors, but clearly some of these are making their way through. You see the one going there towards Phoenix. There's no interceptor missiles that are close by. Um, just lost Phoenix. It's like one missile was intercepted there, the one going to San Diego. San Antonio was lost. Philadelphia. Chicago. Los Angeles. So when I say lost, too, keep in mind that doesn't mean the city's destroyed. The city marker in the game has a certain amount of hit points. I shouldn't say game, simulation game, whatever you want to call it. It has a certain amount of damage points. It's not representative, though, of what would actually happen. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross over into the Nuclear War Simulator, 
which is really where you simulate casualties and everything. Command modern operations is really good at simulating the different weapon systems. They're not as good about simulating casualties or very much at all. I'd love if they had an overlay, which could do both. Um, but since there isn't, what I do is I will model the systems here and see which ones were intercepted, which ones were actually able to land and where they're able to land. And then from there, I go over to the nuclear war simulator and I test out what will be the casualties with the different warhead explosions. On this, kept it very straightforward. 100 kiloton warheads across their different missile types. We really don't know when it comes to North Korea exactly what their capabilities are now. There are some estimates based on what we've seen through the parades and other stuff. And probably in the intelligence community, they probably have a better idea um, than what's released to the public. Uh, having said that, it's an approximation. Um, but in this idea, we had five cities that got hit. So I'm going to go over the nuclear war simulator. I'm going to test out what would be the casualty rates if we have five 100 kiloton warheads dropped on these five cities. So look at what was expended here. So a lot of uh, a lot of systems. I didn't see the early Burks or the destroyers there along the west coast attempt any intercepts, but it may have happened so quickly because I had it at a high rate of speed because command modern operations is slow. It's extremely slow. This, this stuff takes time. I mean, you're looking at an ICBM, it takes about 30 minutes from launch to target, depending on the location of the target and the launch site. Suffice to say, it's not very quick. So, and I don't think anybody want to watch these little dots going across the screen for 30 to 40 minutes. So, here I'm just switching over to the nuclear war simulator. Like I said, I had to re-record the audio, so there's probably a couple of things I was talking about here going into the actual strikes. So changing that to be the yield 100 kilotons. I did everything at a 500-meter air burst. That actually tends to produce, through my testing, the maximum amount of casualties. Um, so I've tested where there's a 500-meter air burst. I've done surface burst, and I've done higher altitude bursts, and it looks like that that's that diminishing return. So, of course... Struck San Antonio, struck Los Angeles, Los Angeles, um, Chicago, Cicero too, even for that matter, Philly. Been to both Philly and Chicago not too long ago. And Atlanta, but I don't have bombing Atlanta here. And so I did make one mistake here. It actually struck San Jose, but I did San Diego. Hey, tomato, tomato, what's the difference? So, there's those five warheads. Calculate the casualties. And 900,000. Some change. Almost a million. And if you were to think about it, this just calculates initial casualties. We would have follow-on casualties. That number would be well over a million. So... Five were struck. There was a total with multiple reentry vehicles of 12 warheads. So some were intercepted. It was kind of hard to see because, again, it, took, it went very quick there towards the end. But some of those were intercepted, but five were able to get through. So the question being, does the U.S. ballistic missile systems, is it capable of stopping a North Korean limited ICBM strike? And if it's in conjunction with them making a more saturated strike against our allies in the Pacific, including U.S.-based forces, at least according to this simulation, we would not be 100% stopping their attack. We would suffer casualties, including into the range of a million. So, it goes back to what I usually say in these scenario, scenarios. Nuclear brinkmanship is a very dangerous game to play. Even a limited amount of strikes would cause untold casualties and long-term effects for economic and everything else. It's not a game we want to go down. But it's important to simulate this stuff to understand. So look for another video to come out. I just did one on Ukraine and a limited Russian strike against Ukraine forces. But I'm going to start to introduce some electronic warfare into that to see how that plays. Because Ukraine was actually able to do a pretty good job of intercepting short range nuclear tip ballistic missiles against from russian strikes
how would they do if there's electronic warfare incorporated? And then I'm going to also do where we're going to focus on the actual strikes on the Korean Peninsula and not necessarily on the United States. This was focused on ICBMs against the United States. So look forward to those videos coming out. I appreciate everybody. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this. Have a great evening. Thanks.